Hey there, it's Joe the CRM chap here and we're back with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those looking to validate their skills in developing solutions on top of or indeed extending out the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to take a look at the ribbon. Um, within the within model driven apps and how we can customize the ribbon to add on uh, a command button now a ribbon is probably one of the most powerful um, tools that we've got at our disposal from a model driven app perspective um, to give you some context they're basically um, it's basically this area up here that we can see in this sample app so the bit where we have all the buttons such as okay save new deactivate etc all of this forms part of the the ribbon and we can access this in multiple areas of the application so if I was to sort of go up a level onto my list of views down here I can see I get a whole new set of buttons that appear to me um, I can have different buttons appearing based on when I have one record or indeed multiple records selected we can see we get a new set of buttons up there so all of this is ultimately um, provided to us and also can be customized further by us so if for example we wanted to um, have a new button on there we wanted to modify the behavior of an existing button we can actually go on and sort of do that um, so in this um, video today what we're going to do is we're just going to show you how you can create a very simple button that we're going to add on to our account form we're just going to place it probably somewhere at the top along here and then it's going to be um, call a javascript form function which will just display a little alert message for us when um, um, when we press it um, so nothing too complicated but through the process we'll hopefully be able to see um, the steps involved that we need to do each time to deploy it out so the first thing we need to do is, is because we're using a JavaScript um, function to be able to um, call the logic for our button, we need to get this into the application first of all. So if I go to Visual Studio Code down here, you'll, you, uh, you may recognize this JavaScript file from the video from last, uh, last week um, where we basically added a simple script onto the account form. What I've done here is just extend this out a little further, added on a new script, uh, a new namespace down here, that basically just calls just a alert dialog that we can then um, sort of um, press OK or dismiss in the in the application. So first of all, we need to get this into um, into our Dataverse environment. So I'm going to go back up to the Maker portal, maker.powerapps.com. I'm going to click on Solutions down here. I'm going to go into my PL400 demo solution. I'm going to find the web resource down here. So it'll be this one here, I believe. Um, so I'll just give that a second to load. And then what we want to do is go to the text editor down here. We should see an earlier version of this JavaScript file down here when it loads. Um, and whilst we're just waiting for that, let's just do a control A to select all, control C just to grab that onto the clipboard. And then we just want to completely overwrite this in here. Press OK. And then we just want to make sure we've saved and published that out. Okay, so now with that done, uh, we can start to build out our um, ribbon customization, but it's not something that we can do within the Maker portal. Instead, we have to um, use a um, some of the community tools that we've got available to us to be able to do this. Now, if you haven't heard of or used this tool yet, I really do recommend that you check it out. Uh, it's called the XRM Toolbox. So what it does, it gives you a, a set of different community-made um, apps that you can use to do sort of um, you know various admin or developer type focus activities um, you know that target your particular data first environment. So we can see down here we've got the, the, the you know apps that will let us export out translations, uh, let us manage custom entities icons, um, metadata browser things like that. Uh, munch some data. Yeah, if you haven't munched data before, definitely do that. Um, so basically just a whole set of different really useful applications that the community has provided. So this is really your essential tool to have on your desktop each day as you're working with the Power Platform. It can really help speed you along. So um, as I mentioned, we need to use a specific tool to customize the ribbon. And in this case, we're going to be using the fantastic ribbon workbench tool uh, from the legendary Scott Duro. So we're just going to click onto that app on there going to ask me okay do I want to connect to my organization so yeah I'm just going to select um, the dev test environment that we've got set up on here and it's going to load up the app and the first thing it's going to ask us is to um, is to select a solution now if I was to just select my PL400 demo solution like so I'm going to get an error message um, now typically when you're performing ribbon customizations you want to make sure that you're working with a solution that contains just the 
tables that you want to customize uh, because from a performance standpoint it's going to make it a lot easier for you to export out um, and import that back in. So in this case you can see we get an error message to tell us that our particular solution doesn't meet those requirements. So what we need to do is we need to just come out of this for a second, go back into our portal. I'm just going to create a new temporary solution in here. I'm just going to call this uh, PL400 uh, Ribbon uh, Customizations. I'm going to set this to my um, Contoso Manufacturing Limited Publisher. I uh, don't really care too much about these details. This is just a temporary holding solution that we're going to be using. Um, and then when that sort of loads up, if you just give it a second, yep, there it is. I'm then just going to add in my account table. Um, we're not going to add any subcomponents or anything like that. We're just going to add in just the just the table that we want to add the ribbon um, custom button to. Now you may be asking, okay, well, how does this um, affect me from a deployment standpoint for my solution? Well, because I'm customized, because ribbon customizations apply at the table level. If I customize the account table in this solution, any changes I make will be automatically reflected in our PL400 demo solution over here. So therefore, I can then just make my amends, export out my demo solution to my other environment, and then my ribbon button um, that amends that I make will be visible in there as well. So yeah, so generally you need to just make sure that you've got maybe just a temporary solution set up in your dev environment just to handle any potential ribbon customization you need to make. So now we can return to the ribbon workbench. We may, oh no, it's picked it up, so there it is. So there we've got our PL400 ribbon customizations uh, solution. No error this time because it's all looking good. So we'll just give that a second just to download and uh, load it up into the workbench. So when it's loaded up, we get a view similar to this. Um, so we have our list of um, tables, or as they were previously known, entities down here, that shows us all of the bespoke customizations that may already apply to our ribbon. In this case, because we've not modified anything yet, this area is empty. But up the top here, we can see the three areas where we can modify our particular um, ribbon. So home will be at the, at the view level, as we saw in the application, being able to modify the ribbon buttons that appear there. Subgrid, so that's for any um, related table subgrid that we add to our forms. Again, there's a separate set of buttons that we can add onto there. And then finally, form down there, which again, self-explanatory on there. So because we want to add on our particular button to the form, uh, what I want to do is just drag on from the toolbox down here, just a button. And I'm just going to put this onto here like so. I'm just going to rename this to something a bit more descriptive. So I'm just going to call this uh, p 100 sample. Now at this point then, we can then start to add on our particular commands. Um, we can also, in addition, add on display and enable rules as well, which we'll sort of come into in a bit more detail in a second. But first of all, let's just create a command, first of all. Um, so I'm just going to call this um, PL400 uh, sample command. So add action. So we want to have a JavaScript action on here. We're going to want to find the JavaScript library that we have um, added into the system already. So I'm just going to give that a quick search. Uh, I may need to re-familiarize myself with what it was called. Just give me a sec. Con PL400 sample. Yep, that's it. So let's type that in. And then we should see. Yep, there it is. And then I need to add in the full function name, including the sort of namespace as well. So I'm just going to grab this do a bit of a copy and paste job from Visual Studio Code, um, just so I have to type it out all manually, add a dot to the end, and then I just want to add on the name of the function. Now the good thing about this as well is that we can also pass in parameters as well. So we can pass in maybe dynamic parameters, so maybe we could have, let's say, one function that we call multiple times, but also CRM parameters as well. So in this case, I'm just going to pass in the primary control. This just gives us some detail about the, the form itself as well. So what we can actually do is maybe, you know, adjust our alert based on, um, you know, what's on the form, what fields are on there, you know, what sort of um, um, things are sort of present on the form already. Um, so I'm just going to add that on there like so. Now, display and enable rules. So display rules um, sort of dictate whether the um, button is visible. Enable rules will dictate whether the button is sort of enabled um, and can be sort of added on. And we can add on multiple different um, uh, display and enable rules for a particular um, command. Um, so if we just have, we're not going to set one up today, but if we just have a quick look at some of the options that we've got on here, you know, so we can do things such as, okay, we want to only enable it such as when it's on a specific um, table or entity. 
uh, when a value is sort of met based on a user's privilege in the application, we've got a whole set of different rules that we can potentially tag on to our particular button. So as I say, we're not going to worry too much about that today. So I'm just going to go back to our, to our command uh, over here like so. Uh, at this point, this is all looking good to go. Uh, we just need to tag on our command to our button as our next step. So I'm just going to select the command like so. Um, so we're just going to we're just going to add on some detail about here. So um, sample button, just so we can see how this all runs in the application. Uh, sample button for PL400 uh, video series. We typically want to add on an image to our button. Um, so these days we probably just make sure because everything is driven by our unified interface, we want to make sure that we've uploaded a, an SVG um, into there and then tagged it into the modern image down there. You'll see why why that may be preferable when we see how the button renders in a few seconds. But, we're not, but for time purposes today, we're not going to worry too much about that. Uh, and at this point then, our ribbon button is ready to go. So all we need to do now is press on publish at the top. Um, I'm just going to ask us just to confirm it. Um, you know, you, it is generally recommended that yeah, you do take backups first because you could potentially break the whole application if you're not careful of ribbon amends. So yeah, do take note of that. But, but for today, we shouldn't be doing anything that will cause too much of a problem. So let's just give that a second just to build and deploy out. Okay, so that's imported in. It's just finishing publishing now. So just give it a few more seconds. Okay, so that's published out now. So what we, we get a, a warning down here that we haven't got a, an alternate ID for our particular, um, um, for, our label, for our button down there, but we can just sort of safely ignore that. The publish operation has completed successfully. Now what we can do is we can go back into our model-driven app. I'm just going to hit Control F5 to completely refresh the application. And that's generally necessary when we do these type of mends. And we can see that we've now got a new button on here, press me. Um, so. It's got a sort of jigsaw icon, so this is this is what I mean in terms of just making sure that you have got an SVG icon um, set up for your particular button. That's always going to be a um, um, something you want to do. So now, if we just select this now, we can see that we get an alert. So it successfully called our JavaScript function. Um, there's a bit of a typo in there, which I've just realised. So we would need to uh, sort of fix that out. But we can sort of say that, yep, yeah, this is all loaded up on there. We, our title, our bespoke messages on there, and then we can just press the yes button just to close that. So, you know, in of itself, this is not a particularly useful ribbon button. It's not going to, you know, um, do anything particularly, um, it's going to, you know, automate things or help our users in any particular way. Um, but hopefully through the steps that we've seen just now, you've got a bit of an understanding and a flavor of what you need to do when you first sort of um, configuring a command button for the first time. And indeed understand some of the core concepts that you will need to grasp if you are indeed um, tackling the PL400 exam, PL exam at all in the future. So that wraps it up for today. Uh, I hope you found today's video useful and indeed the whole series. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. It'd be great to have you along uh, for the ride. All you need to say is have a great day ahead and thanks again. Cheers.